guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids and I'm joined with Lily. And uh, we are glad you're joining us here on Spring Break Week. So we've got a lot of kind of spring and Easter projects all in store this week. Most of them are inspired by famous artists. And today we're going to be doing a mixed media collage. It's sort of collaging and painting. You're gonna use a lot of supplies and we're gonna make something that looks kind of like this. Inspired, ooh, you're a little tired today, Lily? No. <laughs> Inspired by the famous artist, American contemporary artist named Robert Kushner. Here's an image of one of his works, and we're gonna make a tulip as well uh, with a collage of papers behind it. So, we need to make sure you can gather those supplies and get everything you need. So Lily, what are they gonna need today? Well, what you're gonna need for the supplies for today's project is you're gonna need um, a one color paper, some masking tape. You don't have to use masking tape if you want your papers to go all the way to the edges of the of the paper you're using. But we just use it to give a nice finish at the end, so it looks cleaner. Then you also need a paper plate for to um, stand as your paint palette. You need some paints. Oh, they some, do. Um, scraps of paper or we have also wrapping paper we can cut up um, you'll need a water jar to medium um, paintbrush you'll need a glue stick a pencil some paper towels and some scissors and a ruler yeah and so if you can gather up that's a lot of things to gather up just know that if you don't have any watercolor paper if you have cardstock poster board or even a canvas. Anything that you have, you wanna just have a white surface behind it. Um, and if you don't have any paper with patterns, you can always rip a page out of a magazine and cut that too. So go ahead and gather up your supplies and let's get ready to do this project. While you're gathering those up, I'll tell you a little bit about our, state, our, our channel. If it's your very first time coming to our YouTube channel, Art Classes for Kids, uh, what we do is a different projects all the time and uh, most of the projects are inspired by famous artists either contemporary or from the past and uh, we'll do drawings, we'll do paintings and sometimes we'll do sculptures and uh, we'll take you step by step. The great thing is that we pre-tape them and you can pause the video at any time. So if we're going a little too fast you can pause it but some people are ready to go faster and don't want to wait. So we got both of those options. Um, Gosh, what else? Hey, if you ever need any supplies, we have a website, which is artclassesforkids.com. And on our website, we have a list of supplies. We've narrowed down the things we use over and over again for a lot of these videos. All the basics, you know, like chalk pastels, oil pastels, colored pencils, different papers, different tapes, glue sticks, um, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And we have a link to our affiliate, amazon.com. And once that you're at our site, if you purchase any supplies off of our site, which will get uh, charged to Amazon.com and delivered quickly by Amazon.com, then you, by you purchasing them through us, that will contribute a small bit of money towards us keeping these videos that you get to watch at home to you free. So hopefully uh, you'll think about that next time you need some supplies. We also have another form of support, which is called Kofi. And Kofi is uh, an app that you can uh, give us a small tip if you'd like to keep these don't keep these videos free. And uh, there's a link in our descriptions, and you can check that out at the end of the video. And if you like this video, keep watching them and keep supporting our channel. Um, so hopefully now you think that they've gotten all their supplies. Well, now, also, uh, oh, yeah, tell about at pictures. the very end of once you're done making your work of art, you can post your photo on Instagram and tag it with Art Classes for Kids or email it to Art Classes, to Kim at ArtClassesForKids.com and hopefully we'll see your photo. Yeah, spot. and if we do, we love seeing it. We've been getting so many photos lately, not only of the art that kids have done in our projects, but sometimes 
they let us know that some of them are their their moms have made or their grandparents made. Okay, so once you get all your supplies and you're ready to get started, let me show you how to tape the edges if you choose to tape the edges and get that little white space around it. You're gonna take your tape. Oh, Lily, you tired today? No, I'm not. This, you know, we don't have to wake up for school as early as usual, so I think she's up a little late. Um, we are going to pull the tape out and then line it up with the edge of the white paper. Rub it down, hold it in the corner, and whip it to rip it, okay? Yeah, and you don't wanna, um, if you ever have any excess uh, tape, you oh, don't like wanna this. wrap it around. You don't wanna wrap uh, it around. Because then you'll, at the very end, it'll end up like, sticking like all the way and you don't want it and it, it'll be really hard to get off at the very Yeah, end. mostly because another piece of tape's coming around on top of it. Yes. So, um, so just keep it simple. Just line it up, press it down, squeeze and whip it to rip it. Okay, and lastly, here. Okay, so the first oh, you step, got a little, little thing bump. Right there. Okay, let me fix that. All I do, if a little, I get like a little bump, yeah, I'll just peel it, straighten it out a little more, and then rub it down. Okay, so we've got our taped paper, and this is the area in the white space where we're going to collage strips of paper. So I'm going to move a few things out of the way so we have a little bit of bigger working space. Okay, yeah, you so won't the need the paints until later. The strips of paper... You can just take scraps, maybe you have a bag of scraps, maybe you're a scrapbooker type person, or you just have them from a school project or something. So well, I'm gonna use these scraps and my mom's gonna cut a couple pieces of paper. Okay, so how you're gonna do it is you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna take your pencil, and roll this a little, and you're gonna lay your pencil inside of your wrapping paper like this, and you're going to draw a line so the edge of the paper is lined up with the with uh, or with the ruler, and then you're gonna add that other line on the other side of the ruler. And if you keep making them the thickness of the width of the ruler, they're all gonna be the same size, which is about an inch. So then I go and I cut it on the line, just to your best, they don't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna cut this piece, and now I've got my first strip. I really like this neon orange, so I'm gonna cut some of this. I think I'll do two pieces of this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You found a bunch of metallics, like pieces that you might be able yeah. to use? Okay, so this will be my second strip. So, now just take your time and um, keep cutting. Um, this might be a part where you wanna pause the video and take as much time as you need to cut your strips. Or you, you could just watch us, you know? Later. Okay, I like this kind of pink color. So I'm gonna make Or you nice. could skip to the next part of the video if you don't wanna see us do all this. <laughs> uh, if you don't wanna wait for us. Oh, but this is so much fun watching us draw lines and cut paper. Now, if you love to cut and glue, this is your project. But this is mixed. We're, we're mixing it with um, painting with painting and a little bit of drawing. So you get to do a lot of different skills in this one, a variety of skills. Okay, so I've got a little gold paper. I think I'm going to, I like this one that's silver and tan striped. So let's see, if, woo! Let's see if I can get a long piece of this. You're gonna make yours bright and colorful? Yeah. I'm gonna make mine kind of golds and tans and a little pop of color. Cool. Okay, so this one. And you want at least nine strips of paper or more. Yeah, because, yeah, I think you're gonna yeah. need between and nine end, and 12 strips. And at the end, once you're gluing all your pieces together uh, to your piece of paper, if you if you end up uh, cutting some pieces of strips of paper, and then at the end you you, you figure out that you don't have enough pieces of paper, you can just go in and cut some more. I like this one. Oh yeah, that's cool.
Plus you can have some be the stripy side and some be the regular. I really like this one because it's got silver and a dark color on it. So let's kind of cut a few pieces of this. So while we're cutting, do you want to talk about this artist? And sure. That's so Robert Kushner is an American artist who is contemporary. That means he's still making art as we speak. He's a you're practicing artist working in a studio and he makes a lot of these paintings and they look like this. But they're really big. Some of them are as big as, you know, 20 feet tall or 20 feet wide. This I'm done cutting, so I'm going to show hold up some of these. Okay. So those are some. This one has a little bit more color in it and he is, um... Oh, some of our paper fell off to the ground. Aw. His style of painting is floral, but very decorative, with like patterns in the background, and a lot of times he uses gold leafing on the back. That's like thin, really, really thin sheets of actual And if you gold. do have any gold leafing left over, if you did our um, St. Patrick's Day, a video then yeah, you might have some gold leafy yeah or some gold glitter or gold paint or something uh, that you can, you can probably add to this yeah so his style reminds me a lot of a famous artist from over a hundred years ago named Gustav Klimt Gustav Klimt was an artist that was part of the Art Nouveau movement and he did a lot of decorative art his art the people in, in his paintings, the figures, the people had very decorated clothes with lots of patterns on them. He did a famous painting called The Kiss, which is somebody hugging somebody and they have these robes on that have a lot of decoration. He also did a famous painting called The Tree of Life, and maybe you've seen that before. We have a Pinterest video of how to make a project with it, and it's a tree where all the ends of the branches swirl into little spirals. And then they also have like little details like jewels all over them. It's really cool. So um, he's part of the decorative painting movement. So let's see, what else do we have? We have some of this, oh, I already picked some gold. Ah, I'm gonna do, what other colors? I'm gonna do some orange. Oh, I have some skinny orange. I'm gonna take this orange. I think I might have enough paper. Uh, let me take some of this paper. I'm kind of organizing my paper a little bit. Okay, I love this one. I have to sneeze, okay. Don't worry if you get some uh, lines on your paper because we're gluing paper all on top of it. You'll never see what's going on under it. Oh, I thought that was another one. Okay, this. Okay, I think I just might have enough now. Yeah, Okay. I'm once, gonna start gluing down. Once you think you have enough papers, you know, move all your papers into a pile. And we can move that back. Okay, so now I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm doing my stripes vertically. That means up and down. So I'll start on one side, undo my glue stick little. I'm gonna give it like two or three lines of glue. And I'm going to take one of my pieces of paper and start right in the corner of the white area. I'm trying not to get anything on my glue tape. And then you just press it down. My and then it starts easy. Weird. Like so then I'm gonna add on another piece. You can just put your scissors under it and cut it. Or if you don't trust that, you can draw a line. I didn't cut that one so good. I'll recut it. Just like that. Now I go to my next row. So I add a couple of lines of glue. Now I take my piece of paper and I stick it down. Just repeat your step over yeah, and over again. You don't have to use that whole piece of paper. You might just use part of it. Now I'm gonna do a part right here. And I only need a little bit. So I folded it so I could remember where to cut it. And then I just put some glue and stick it on. Remember, you don't want it to go on your, your taped, you know, outside area. But you can have some of your pieces overlap other uh, pieces of paper if you want. Yeah. Okay, so see, I'm on my third row. So I've cut all these really long pieces, but I don't have to have them long. 
Oh, what happened to that gold paper I thought I cut? Well, maybe I didn't cut any gold paper. Okay. I don't think you did. I don't think I did. I like that gold, too. I'm going to cut a piece of this gold paper. Okay, so... I will get a couple pieces of this gold paper because it gets a really cool reflection. And it has this Robert Kushner kind of gold look to it. sneezing a lot because it's allergy season. We've had great temperatures and tons of wind, so that's kind of the bummer about going outside in the wind. Okay, here's gold. So I'm gonna take gold and put it all the way up here, because my glue, oh, my glue dried up already. Better put some more glue on it. Okay. Getting it all glued down. Cutting. I'm gonna take this gold and just start this little scrap of gold down here. Put a little more glue there. Alrighty, how about some more of this dark color? I'm not gonna use this whole thing though, I'll use half of it. I'll save some for another row. Okay, so I'm getting my glue on here. I have that piece. What should I pick? I think I'll do purple again. So I got two pieces there. I'll just flip this upside down. It's wider there. Okay, so remember, make sure you're trimming it right where your tape starts, or if you didn't use the tape, you can start it right before it then. Okay, I have this little gap here. I can leave that there, or I can just put this on it. Yep, okay, and make sure that stays glued down good. You don't want anything coming off because we're gonna be adding paint on it afterwards and uh, you don't want it to peel off after you make that really oh, good yeah. paint. So make sure you have plenty of glue on, on, on this paper. And there are two different ways you can cut off your pieces. You could either fold it and then cut it or you could draw a line with your pencil and cut where the line is. Yep. Oh, look, I'm that far down. Wow. Well, I got a little experience. I'm <laughs> good. Okay, so we'll keep it my going glue's, now. My glue is, is kind of weird because it like bounces back. Okay, yeah. I've got this one. It's silver. Okay, so this one I'm going to put right here. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna fold this one to know where it works. So actually, I'll just rip it that way. If you have really thin paper, it might rip easy. Okay, and then I'm going to use orange. I think I'll cut this one in half. Because I don't want that big piece of orange right there. Okay, so I've got some glue all in here, and I'm gonna put this orange here. Then I think I'll use some gold again. Cut that one down too. Okay. Just like that. Okay, what color haven't I used in a while that I want to use? This one with the white and tan zigzags, but I'm going to move it a little closer like this. Okay, I'm gonna fold that one to know where to cut it. Or this is that really thin stuff that I was able to rip. This didn't get glued that good, so I'm gonna add some extra glue on this wrapping paper one. Oops. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, so then we also, ooh, I'm gonna do another dark piece. Let's do a dark piece up here. Actually, I'm gonna put it right in the corner because I have this skinny area that I'll put skinny pieces on. And I have a skinny orange right here. Put this on there. I have all solid colors right now, 
So I just can make a whole row of like patterns. Oh, you are? Okay. Now remember, make sure everything's got a lot of glue underneath it so it can't peel off. So far I've got this much going. Okay, I'm gonna extra glue some of mine. Okay, I only need a few more pieces, but I gotta strategically see if those are the pieces I want. Do I want that one? What do I have left? I have gold. Oh, I have this one left. I really like this one. Okay, I'm gonna put this one in this corner right here. And make sure it's glued down really good on the edge. And don't worry if you glue on top of another piece in the glue shows because it will pretty much dry clear. Oh, no, I didn't cut so good. Let's fix that one. Alrighty. Oh my gosh, all I need is something skinny here. And I found a brown skinny. So I'll put that in here and measure it off. Okay, cut that. Looking good, Lily. Got a lot of green. Yeah, make a whole green row. Okay. So now I'm gonna take a look at mine and I filled my space in the inside, except I have a little white space there so I can put something skinny in those white spaces if I want or I can just leave it. But since I have some time, and Lily's right there, I'm gonna put- Oh, I do in. have this skinny piece right here. Oh, okay, I like this pink that I just found. I, I cut this and I never even used it. I forgot about it. So I'll go ahead and put one piece right here. Okay, okay, maybe I will take that piece. I'll take a little piece of that piece. I'll take that much and I'll cut it here. Okay, I'll give you that back. And I'll put this over here and I will just put the glue actually on the pink piece because it's kind of in a weird spot. Now I have all these extras, so if you need an extra piece, really let me know because I've got I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to organize my extra papers and get those out of the way because once I start painting, I want to have an area to work in. Okay, so I cut more papers than I actually needed. I'll put those all back in my little scrap bag, which I just use one of these like binder sleeves. Keeps it thin. Okay. Lid on the glue. And as I wait for Lily, I'm gonna move these wrapping papers out of the way. And I'll set these scraps over there. Let's see. I'm going to mount my on top of a board so that I can hold it up and demonstrate the drawing part easier to you guys. So I'll be doing it like this. So I'll set that right here. Let's do that. And now I'm going to get, we're gonna share a palette because it doesn't take that much paint. So while Lily's finishing that up, I'm going to be putting a couple of colors on the palette. Now we definitely need white. I'm gonna put that in the middle. We're going to need an outline color for, for the leaves. Make sure you can see this. An outline color for the leaves. So I've got a light green or a dark green to choose from. So I'll put a little of both of those on. My glue's almost about to run out. Whoops, I'm dropping stuff. It is, oh, here, borrow my glue stick. Okay, and then I've got a couple of color choices for the outline of the tulip. I've got pink and I've got red. So you can pick whatever color you want. These are just the ones that we're gonna use, or that I'm gonna suggest would come out pretty good. Okay, so I've got the paints in the palette. Then I'll need a jar of water 
and a paper towel. And you're gonna need a pencil so that you can draw on top of your collage of striped papers, the tulip image. Okay, looking good, Lily, you're down to your last row, right? Mm -hmm. And I had just enough glue. Wow, so I'm gonna set this here. And actually, I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna switch positions here. That's our example. Here's our paint. And hopefully you can see all this. Wow, you're almost there. Oh, if you have paint, you can wear an apron or old shirt over it. We're not painting that much, but it's still, if you wanna protect your clothes, gosh, we could've got aprons. We're gonna be really Oh, it's also, Push if up you have sleeves. long sleeves like us, Pull, Pull them up. up all the way to your elbows so that when you reach over, you don't end up with paint all up your sleeve that won't come out because acrylic paints don't come out of your clothes. All right, you're just about ready, huh, Molly? Yeah, I'm just okay, smoothing so off my... Okay, so hopefully you've glued all your paper. papers. If not, just put it on pause, glue all your papers, and then turn it back on again, and we'll still be here. You got it? Yeah, it's just smoothing out all my okay, area. So... Normally you will take your pencil to draw where the tulip is going to go. But what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do it with a black marker because then from far away, you can see it better. Okay, so whenever you're ready, are you ready, Lily? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I'm ready. Okay, so we can move the scraps out of the way. Got all of that clear. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm over here. Here's an image. Here's this. If you want to draw two tulips, you can, but I'm going to teach you an easy tulip to draw. You're going to go to the middle, right in the middle of all of this paper, right in the middle. And you're going to put a smile curve, but it's going to be slightly tilted. So instead of being right here, it's going to be kind of like... Right and it's here. going to be a wide smile. A wide smile. So hopefully you can see my black line right there. Because I'm drawing on top of patterns, right? Then from here, I'm gonna take this smile and I'm gonna puff it out and make a point on top. I want my point to be up really high. Not to the tape, but below the tape by about an inch. So I'm gonna make a little dot here. And then from here, ooh, I tried that pen. I'm gonna puff it out till it reaches that smile curve. Like that. And then over here, like that. So that you can see it from far away, I'm gonna thicken that up. Gosh, something happened to this marker. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think I'm just gonna draw it right here. It's kinda like, like a big raindrop. It is, it's like a big raindrop. Now, to the left, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna put a little point here on the left, like the top of an arrow or the top of a rooftop, a point to the left and make it big. Now, I'm going to come all the way around my first petal and I'm going to make this one come around like this. Now I'm gonna to go to the right of the first petal. And I'm going to make the top, which I said was an arrow top or a roof top, a little lower, but to the right, because my tulip is a little tilted. So I'm going here, it's a little lower than here. See, I only have like about two finger spaces here. And then we're gonna right do like the same exact thing. We're gonna curve it down to the bottom of. Down to the bottom. Down to the bottom curve. Like that. Okay, now we're going, so we've got three, we got one full petal plus two parts of petals. We're gonna do a few more petals. Okay, so to the right, we're gonna do one more. Same thing, but you just add it on. 
So you make that little arrow top and then you curve it down to get to the bottom. So if you see this picture, it has two petals on this side. Yep. Yeah. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put a petal somewhere back here below these two or near here. So this could be a back petal, one hiding behind it. Maybe it's back in here. Like that. Okay, now we're going to get ready to make the stem. At the bottom of the flower portion, you're going to make a smile curve like this. That's what attaches the stem to the flower. Yeah. Now you're going to make two lines and you're only going halfway to the bottom. Two lines. Make sure you can see the start. Here, I'll go this far so you can see. So we've got two lines. Those are the sides of the stem going halfway down to the bottom. And then we're going to be ready to make petals, or leaves. The leaves on tulips are long and pointed, and they curve a little on the way up. We're going to make four of them. So let's start with the first one. The first one, what you're going to do is, hmm, you're going to start at the bottom, and you're going to, kind of right below where the stem would be, you're going to go upward, and before you get to that stem, you're going to curve to the right, keep going uphill, and bring it up to a point like this. Just like that, like you're going up a slide or something. So you start at the bottom, curve to the right. After you curve a little bit, you're gonna go up to the right. Okay, now you're gonna have a really narrow arrowhead like this. So it looks like an arrow at the tip. From there, you're gonna to go to that arrow tip. You're gonna take this one and follow that slide down. And you're gonna do it again, and you're gonna follow it down on the other side. And there you've got your first petal. Okay, now we're gonna do the second petal on the right. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, right in this space, and before you get to the corner, going to make a high arched rainbow curve like this. Now where it ended on the right, this is tricky, where it ended on the right you're going to go really close to that area like this and you're going to come up and instead of ma matching the rainbow curve you're going to come up to the middle like that. So start at the bottom of your, of your paper and then come up halfway to the middle of that rainbow curve. Go up till you touch the other line. You're going to come up till you touch that rainbow curve line. This is tricky. So you're starting at the bottom and you're coming up till you hit the middle of that rainbow curve. There you go. And now you're going to put two lines under the left side of the rainbow curve. This is the left side of the rainbow curve. You're going to repeat that line twice. So watch how I do it. You're gonna go from here until you hit that black line and you're gonna do it again until you hit the black line. Just like that. So you can see the line in the middle of the petal. We're gonna be doing two leaves on the left side. So the first one is going to be a tall one. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start over here to the side of the tulip, but not as high as the tulip, just over here, start with a dot. And now you're gonna make your way down to where the stem might end. You're gonna go like this, go down and then curve in to there. Now make your way all the way down to where the stem would end.
And next what we're going to do is we're going to put a little arrowhead at the top of that, a really narrow one, kind of like we did over here. Like that. Once you have that arrowhead, you're going to do what you did on the other, other leaf, on the other side. You're going to go down and parallel to the middle line and then do it on the other side too. So watch, I'm on the left side of the line that's already there and I'm going to go like this and follow it till I get down to the bottom. Then I'm gonna do it again. Till I get all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna thicken it up so you can see it really good from there. Now, if, you're, if you can see the stem and you can see where it ends, I want you to continue that stem line until you hit a leaf. So watch how I do this line. I'm gonna continue that stem line until I hit a leaf. Sharpie does not like to draw on the metallic paper so well. It's like that. And we only have one more leaf left. And this one is gonna be curving around that leaf. So all you're gonna do here is put three lines that go one, two, three, just like that. Like it's hiding behind the other one. Start at the bottom of that long leaf. Now that you have all those, we're ready to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my marker down. Now what you need is your paper towel. I'll get like marks on mine. You need your paintbrush about this size. This is a medium size. It's called a number six if you have numbers on them right there. That means it's the sixth smallest one. And then we're going to take white paint first. We're gonna paint, we're gonna paint our tulip completely white over the paper. And after that, we're gonna go and outline it with green on the leaves and a color on the petals. So Go ahead and take your brush, uh, squirt some white paint out if you haven't already, and then you start out. Now you can just go right over your lines if you feel like you can see the texture of those, or you just go right up to the line because you're gonna cover that mark, you know, where you drew it with uh, the other bright colors. So I just like to pull my paintbrush when I'm painting so I don't have like hairy lines on the edges. And I don't want to have a lot of goopy paint. If you accidentally go over the tape, that's fine because um, we're just going to take that tape off later. So see how I just pull my paintbrush down and sometimes I flip it over. So I've got one leaf covered. So just work your way through this. Go at your own pace. And uh, if we get done before you, just put it on pause. Looks good. Okay, getting in the skinny areas, one tip is to use the tip of your paintbrush and not press it down all the way, then you get a skinnier line. And you wanna follow with the shape of of what you drew? What you're draw of what you're drawing while you're painting. So all of the brush strokes like stay the same. Yeah, and, and if you go like this and you do it like that, sometimes you'll get some goopy spots. So that's why I just recommend that you just pull your paintbrush through. Hopefully you glued down all your edges really good of your papers because that's what's gonna make it another way to make it smoother to paint. So you don't have a bunch of lumpy paper that's peeling off. You start in here. Remember, the more you press down on your paintbrush, the wider the paint line is. Keep it simple. Just like Bob Ross, he makes it look so simple to make it look simple but I know this is challenging all our projects are kind of challenging but we try to make it easy for you to break it down but then you get to make cool stuff because you were willing to take on the challenge right 
Okay, so. Got this. So I've got all my leaves and my stem done. So I'll wait for you guys to get caught up. While I'm waiting, since I have extra time, and if any of you at, at home got done really quick and you're just waiting, go ahead and give it a second coat of white. If you want, but the style of the artist is kind of heavy transparent paint. So if you want to leave it kind of transparent, it's fine too. Okay, I think I'm good. Alrighty. Now, I don't know what you do with all your art when you're, you know, done, but I hope you display it and show it off. And if you don't just display it and show it off, maybe you give it to somebody you care about for a gift. But um, be proud of your art. Don't forget to share it with us by taking a picture of it because we love to see how it all turned out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and go right into my tulip petals. Nice and smooth. Hopefully you had a brush that was close to this size. That would make it easier to paint something this big. How's it going, Lily? Good. Yeah, your leaves look really good. Okay, I'm doing my last part, which is this big, big petal. Okay, take a look at mine. I've been looking at it upside down the whole time. I might adjust my tulip a little. Okay, now I have it all painted, but I'm gonna take a good look at it. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna turn it around and think, ooh, what can I adjust? Okay, I think I can add some more down in here. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more to mine. Go down here. Okay, I'm making my bulb be up. I'm changing the bottom part of mine because when I draw upside down, sometimes I don't have it quite right. Okay, mine's looking like that. I think I'm gonna make this leaf a little bigger. I feel like my leaves were a little on the skinny side. So I'm gonna make that one a little bigger. And this one, I'll make this one a little bigger too. Okay, I've done a little bit of minor adjusting. Lily's down to her uh, tulip petals. See if I can see this at home. Alrighty, so now that we have our white areas uh, painted in, wipe out your paintbrush and then roll it so that you still have that point because you're gonna need the pointed part, just the tip of the paintbrush, to be really clean for the next part. I think, what, do you wanna do pink or do you wanna do red for your outline, Lily? Um, I'll do pink. She'll do pink, okay. And then do you want light green or dark green? Dark green. Dark green, okay, I'll use light green and I'll use red. And I'm gonna do the leaf outlines first because my leaves are drier than my petals are. So I'm gonna get some green and now what I'm doing is I'm going down the middle line of my petal and remember I'm barely touching this paper because I want it to be a skinny line. If I push all the way down I'm gonna have a big wide line. This one I have in front, so I just added that. And that's how I outlined the green. Next I'll go to this really big one. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna pull my way down. And if um, some of the colors, it's hard to see on your paper, you can go over it a couple of times. Yeah, but it helps if you let it dry in between a second coat. Yeah. So you see this artist, 
he only painted the outlines a bold color. He didn't do any shading. It was just flat white area inside the tulips. Okay. So I've got two leaves done. Now I'm going to do the stem. And where the stem attaches to the flower, I'm only doing the sides. I'm not gonna go across it. Okay. I've got two more leaves to go. So I'm starting up here and I'm gonna go down the middle. Now, if you have a thick piece of paper with a little space under it, maybe you've got to get in there with a little more detail. All right, so far so good. I like that. Nice. Now I'm going to do my last leaf. Oh, I just put white on it, why did I do that? Okay, so I'm going over here. And doing this one. This one I might give a second coat to because my black Sharpie showed through a little bit. But so far I've got my green leaves. That's how that looks. Rinse my brush out. Looking good, Lily. Looks cool. Okay. And then you go ahead and add that center line to that one. And then you're good. Okay, now we are about ready to do our outline of our flower petal color. I'm using red, Lily's using pink. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom. And I'm gonna go around the edges. Do the basic outline first. Yeah. That's what we're doing. So I'm doing the outside edges. Hopefully you can still see where your pencil lines were. If not, maybe you can remember where the middle yeah, petal was. Yeah, maybe is. just try to guess. Yeah, guess where that middle petal used to be. The first one we did that looked like a teardrop. Actually, I'm gonna bring mine down a little lower, like that. You can adjust if you like as you're working. Then I'm going to do those little points. Then I've got this one. This one, I might fix that because I wanted that middle one to go down lower. So this is, if you want to adjust anything, you just rinse out your brush and then you dry it out so it's not wet. Then you can get some white and you, if this is dry enough, you might be able to adjust it. I'll show you how I do that. I'll give it a little more white in a minute after that dries. So I've got all those parts. That looks nice. Now, you see how tulips, they have these wrinkles in the petals. We're gonna add a few of those. I've got them over here too. So you're gonna use your same outline color in the petal. And I'm gonna go like this. So I just curve it up. Maybe I have one in the center of this petal, like a skinny one. So I'm using the tippy tip of my brush to get a skinnier line. Maybe one over here. This one's over here. like that. Now I have that one area that I was touching up with white. I'm going to try to give it one more touch up. Got to get all this red out of my brush. So then I'll take this
than that. Let's see if I can get a little more red here. Alrighty. You got yours all done, Lily? Now, the finishing touch is that we're going to peel off our tape. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Move this back up here. And slowly peel your tape off. That's when you get this really clean edge and it looks all, you know, clean and detailed. If your tape accidentally got underneath some of your paper, you might need to lift it off the paper like I just had a problem. Whoops. Okay, let's see. Mine got caught up under my some of my paper. So if that happens, just go really slow. Hold it down so it doesn't rip so bad. Whoops, okay, this one's a little bit of a challenge. Did you get some under your too? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going really slow, which helps. Some more onto my paper. Yeah. Alrighty. I know I got one area right here where it went under the paper. But I'm getting it off. I just have to do it in smaller pieces. I'll help get this one off. Wow, you ready to do ta-da? <laughs> ta-da! And this is how they turned out. So I hope that you were able to have all the supplies you needed to make this. And uh, I'd love to see how it turned out. So take a snapshot again and Easiest way to do it would be to just post it on Instagram and tag it with at Art Classes for Kids or send it to my email, which is Kim at ArtClassesForKids.com. Now, tomorrow we're doing another uh, spring project, and tomorrow's project. This week we're doing all spring projects. So hey, Jet, good. Jet's behind the scenes. Jet, can you go grab the blue bunny sculpture and just take it off the, the shelf? Cause bunny. Yes. So we'll show you a sneak peek of what, what we have for tomorrow in mind. We are going to be making a, a bunny rabbit inspired by Cause, and it's going to be made with model magic. So all you'll need is model magic. Yeah, but you got to go get some if not. Yeah. Let's see. And any color is fine, but you'll definitely need white. You'll okay. need white and another color. So this is art inspired by the artist cause it's k-a-w-s if you want to look up and learn more about cause and we will be making I'll hold it. it's sort of dry here this is our cause bunny made from model magic so you're going to need one packet it comes in four ounces all you really need is about three ounces and um you can uh pick this for one color then you need a few scraps of another color which we had white. So if you don't have any, you might have to get another pack. But that's up to you. Yeah. The, you can buy this stuff. You need white and another cup. Yeah, you can buy this at Target or Walmart. And I don't think Michael's is open right now because of it's not an essential store. But you can always do the drive up pickup so you don't have to go in a store if you want. And these are about $3.50 each. So if you can join us, all you'll need is the clay, a few toothpicks for detail and a pair of scissors to cut with and then you're set. This is a really fun project and I know in my classes sculpting is the most popular thing, sculpting with clay. So I hope you'll join us for that tomorrow. Let's set that aside and uh, thanks for joining us. I can't wait to see you next time. Keep making cool, cool art. art.